Welcome to Working with Mad Mapper, and this is the ninth movie in a series from um, one through eight and into nine, where we look at actually putting things together. Now, this is a very linear piece of Working with Mad Mapper. No cipher, no interactive. It's all being put together with a whole series of movies and created sound in order to create a very linear piece, because it was actually based on a 3D animation for a, a trailer for Toy Oda Racing series. So if you want to locate any of the earlier movies that things that are not covered here, it's just the Think Forward um, on the YouTube channel and that will show you where the rest of them are to help you get up to speed. Anyway, we're going to have a quick look and just see how everything goes together when you're actually putting a piece of work together for the projection in a linear format. And the main three files here is basically Apple's Motion. You could use After Effects, but um, my preference is Motion. Um, and that's compositing a video that's dropped into Mad Mapper itself. So as you can see, if we look through a whole range of files here, all these single little files of animations and stills, a whole lot of sound, sound files um, that were all built, the Soundtrack um, Pro version from Final Cut Pro, so built on that with loops and even a few folio tracks. So sound was created in Soundtrack, um, Stratus CX7 um, for doing all the 3D animation and of course compositing with Apple's Motion. Now the step that after compositing it was actually producing the video and I want to have a look at that first just to show you what's going on here. I'll just bring this up into view and uh, just drop this down here. And it's actually 1440 wide and something you need to set up in uh, your mapper program, um, being Mad Mapper in this case. But um, I'm just going to play just a segment of this to give you an idea on just how this movie is being made up. It's a whole series of different segments that I can be, um, or we can use with the quads, etc. when you're actually creating it. Let's have a quick look. T minus one minute and counting. <laughs> Just stop it at that stage but what you can see is there's a movie segment here there's a main movie here there's going to be another segment down the bottom and this little area is here uh, you can inter um, use these movies and different quads or replicate them whatever and you'll notice that I also had movies that uh, cross over into the other path and that can create some quite cool effects as well so something you can actually play with or just work out in advance as you get more used to it but anyway, most of the work's actually in creating this linear format. So I'm just going to quit that movie and let's go into Mad Mapper and just have a little bit of a look at that. So as I said, my main three files are just the creation um, program, which is in this case Motion, could be After Effects, um, create the movie and then all dropped into Mad Mapper. So I'll just open that up and we'll watch T the start of this. Minus one minute and counting. <laughs>
T minus one. Now what I'll do is I'll just stop that now so we can see how this has been put together. We have the input box and the output box or panel. If I just click on the input box here and just uh, increase the size of it, this was the actual movie. I've just actually sl slid it across to any part where I want it to um, play with here. So we can see how these different segments worked. So this is how it comes in, essentially all you do, if I click on here, that we've got some masking in this particular file here, and um, basically you can just uh, drag to zoom in, and it will just in increase the size or zoom into the size that you work on the output box. You can even play with um, the settings and the colors by playing with whatever selection your alphas here, or um, in this case your red, green, blue. In this case down the bottom here, if I click on my edit mask, I can even edit the mask itself here. So what I'm going to do now is I'll just go um, out of that and I'm going to go back into the um, out box. In fact, I'll click on both of them so you can see what's happening here in terms of both of them, both views, and I'll zoom that down. And we're just going to concentrate on that. So I'll get rid of the inbox and just increase the size. Um, actually, I'm just on the wrong one here, so I better make sure. Um, on this size now and just increase it. Okay, so this is the output box or panel so we can see how everything was constructed. Um, again, the masking area was just here. I can click on another segment here and this is where I move it around. I'm not zooming it in here, this is just the area, but this is where I can play with it. I can even go down to using mesh warping the mask like I created in this other example here, um, change colors. Uh, do whatever you want, even opacity, and you just basically click on these different segments here to highlight the areas that um, you basically want to work with. So it's as simple as that. Now what I've also got here is I'm just going to minimize the view, not minimize it, but to just to turn it off, all the segments, so we can see the background image that I brought in. This is all done through the view and you can just change any background. Now I just shot this with a camera in order to get a view based on what I was going to project. I did move it from where the projector was, but if I turn that back on, you can see that they don't match up. But at least I had basically things sort of in the right area, but um, no problem by just moving anything around in order to get the right view or, or even just tweaking it up by moving it like so. So it really did still help, even though I didn't shoot it correctly in the first place. It's really good if you do get a really accurate shot, because you've got um, less changes, just very minor tweaking when you get to do the projection. But essentially, that's an example of um, how um, this is put together. So um, there's earlier movies that will take you through all the details of this, including doing extra things like um, just setting up your stage size. We could actually make it a bit wider here. Um, playing with a few other effects, um, and particularly um, this area, um, which is actually setting up basically um, our presets to, to, to have a whole variety of changes um, where you can actually just take things in or out. For example, if I just want to set up a new preset or set this as a preset, I can just click here, or just sorry, just turn it on and add the preset and give it a name. Um, I'll call it start. Perhaps um, it should be called um, full, 
terms of all the images here. But um, if I um, just say take one off, and I'll just delete that, um, back in the presets here, I'll click again, and I'll go just delete, not a very good name for it, just return that. But I've got a segment which I can play which doesn't have that area within it, unless I want to go back here. So I could have any number, and I can work with it live. So really fantastic tool to work with um, quickly. So as I said, all the work was in the um, setting up of it, and um, uh, it's a lot of fun when you're actually just ready to put it into the Mad Mapper and play it with using this um, very linear format. Now down here, what I've got is I've got my image um, as backing images, which are straight images, and they can just sit there until I'm ready to play or have anything that's going to be a light projector in. Um, even another movie really um, and when I'm ready for the movies I just click here and of course later on particularly when um, you get more into Siphon and you can work directly with uh, the new version coming out with Mad Mapper which will talk straight to Siphon so that's going to be very very exciting. So that's just a quick overlay of how this file works. Uh, there was another file created um, of it working with just a, a very uh, basic test, um, low power projector, but just to sort of show the idea of the concept. But this is really the guts of putting it together, ready for the grunty projectors once you really want to take it to the final performance. So I enjoy working with um, Mad Mapper. It's a, it's a great tool.